Hello everyone, the Instant Camera Guy here. It was Mahatma Gandhi who said, be the change that you want to see in the world. Now, I won't compare myself to him, but it's a sentiment that I do share. Here at the Instant Camera Guy, I try and lead by example. Those following my channel will know that I've done numerous videos by this point about how much I despise products with built-in non-user replaceable batteries. I've done numerous teardowns of modern Polaroid cameras, such as their flagship Polaroid i2, which has a built-in, non-easily user-replaceable lithium-ion battery. And for my effort in trying to erase awareness for this fact, I've been labeled a shill, said that I was wanting to simply promote my business. I've been accused by uh, accused of being negative for attention and views. And I was accused recently by one relatively famous instant photographer of hating Polaroid and other technicians. Now, I'd like to point out that all of this simply isn't true. The truth of the matter is that I well, dislike all companies that put up unnecessary barriers to repair. And in terms of batteries, I've also put Mint and Polar Studios in my crosshairs because, well, their iType bat uh, battery adapters for SX-70s also contain non-user replaceable batteries. Um, and I've pointed out, you know, just the, the state of uh, current mobile phone manufacturers, for example. Look at a lot of uh, laptops, for example. These days, a lot of the batteries are built in and they are not easy to replace, which means that the general public is more likely to throw them out once they die. Now, I try and practice what I preach. I, for example, invented the Polavolt, which is a lithium ion i-type battery solution uh, comprising of two 10440 3.7 volt lithium cells and a bucket converter which you can put on any folding Polaroid camera. Um, and I've also done other videos for example on how to i-type modify uh, box cameras such as this Sun 660 which I've modified to take uh, regular triple A's. And of course I offer these services for clients, but if you really wanted to, like I've done videos on how you can wire this up yourself if you really want to DIY. It is open source and the only thing I ask is, you know, you give me some credit if you're going to share it around on social media, let people know who invented the technique. Um, but, you know, in terms of phones, I went out and purchased a Fairphone 5 when my Galaxy S8, my Samsung, finally bit the dust. And I did that because I care about what this company stands for, sustainability and repairability. And this phone, which you can see through its clear back cover, has a user replaceable battery. Right? Because as far as I am concerned, and you can throw as many straw man arguments at me as you want about Pick a topic, pretty much. But the truth is that I firmly believe that all electronics products should have a battery that is easy for the user to replace when it dies. And I try and encourage this in companies as best as I possibly can. And that is exactly what I did uh, with the SX-70R project. I basically contacted Yongmin Lu and said specifically that the dongle that he was supplying with the SX-70R PCBs simply wasn't a good enough design. And that's why he's come up with this, the new variant. Allow me to walk you through it. Now, if you're watching this video going, Jake, what the hell is an SX-70R? Uh, you should check out this video, which I'll chuck on screen, which goes in depth all about it, but in a nutshell, it is a brand new PCB replacement for the SX-70 that adds a whole bunch of functionality, such as manual control of the shutter, remote shutter release, and Bluetooth connectivity, meaning that you can control the camera via an app on your phone or through a dedicated Bluetooth dongle. Now, the dongles I mentioned in the original video, um, and you guys might see that on my social media, I've refurbished plenty of SX-70R cameras, but I haven't sold many with the dongles. And that is for a good reason. I just didn't really like the original design. It had a few flaws in it, in my opinion, and so I've been very cautious in terms of rolling out these on any kind of mass scale. 
um, the dongles had a few issues. The first is I thought the switches at the top for power and things like that were far too small. And on this version, the switches have been upgraded. They are now really, really large and they are very, very easy to press, even if you had gloves on. Another issue is that the PCB for the connector was a little too thin on original versions for my liking. And although that wasn't really a problem on SX70 Alphas and SX70 Sonars, which had uh, a much beefier socket for the flash, uh, it was a problem on SX70 Model 1s and 2s and resulted in the dongle feeling very, very flimsy. Uh, that is no longer a problem because the PCB is now a thicker size. But most importantly, I have gotten Yongmin Lu to change the battery situation in this camera. Originally, uh, this dongle took a small lithium ion pouch cell, which was soldered directly into the PCB. Now to play devil's advocate, this is not particularly that difficult to replace. The entire dongle comes apart with four screws. You separate the two halves and the lithium ion battery is literally just two leads, a positive and a negative, which are soldered in place. If you ever went to replace that battery, well, you could add a little JST connector in there so that you could plug and play it in the future. But I told Yongmin to do one better than that. I told Yongmin, why don't you just use a 10440 cell? The same type of battery cell that I use in the uh, Polyvolt battery pack. If you don't know what a 10440 is, it is basically a lithium ion battery that is the exact shape and size as a AAA battery. It is not the same voltage though, this is 3.7 volt, a standard AAA is usually 1.5, so do not get these confused, but the benefit with a 10440 is, is, is that it is a universal size, meaning that they will fit into off-the-shelf battery holders. And that is precisely what I've got Yongmin to do. Inside the new dongles sits a AAA battery holder and all that you need to do, if this battery, for example, ever ceased to hold a charge, you simply unclip it and clip a new one back in. That is literally as easy as they are to install. It is as simple as that. You then tighten the four screws to hold the two halves together and that's it. The charging circuitry works in exactly the same way. To charge the battery, you simply get a USB-C connector. So this is about as universal as they get at the current time. Uh, the dongle must be turned on in order to charge. And when you plug the USB-C cable in, it will charge that 10440 battery. A little red LED will come on. Uh, which will turn sort of purple if it's shining alongside the built-in blue LED at the same time. So as long as it's shining either purple or red, you know that the dongle is getting charged. Uh, and as I said, just make sure the power is in the on position, because if you turn it off, it cuts power to the battery and the, the charging circuit is, is going to be doing nothing, basically. Um, but yeah, turn it on, plug it in, and it charges. It's really as simple as that. Um, the battery charges at a rate of about 250 milliamps per hour, meaning that a 320 milliamp hour battery should take just over an hour to fully charge. And once the battery is fully charged, that red LED indicator will turn off. The dongle comes with all the built-in uh, over voltage and charging circuitry already. It simply just needs the battery. And that brings me on to one more advantage to this being that one of the problems with lithium ion batteries being baked into products is it can be an issue for certain shipping companies. And Yongmin found this out the hard way uh, when he tried to send to certain countries that were very strict on regulations. Now, in my experience, countries like the United States of America are pretty lax when it comes to items with built-in lithium ion batteries. They will just happily have it received through the post. But other countries, uh, especially some in Europe, are very picky. If they so much as even suspect that something has a built-in lithium ion battery, they will simply write return to sender and send that battery all the way home. Uh, which has happened to me once, but apparently happened to Yongmin several times. So basically what that means is if I stock one of these uh, dongles, if I keep one of these dongles in stock, 
I'll actually be able to send it to you without any batteries in it. I'll keep the screws loose and in a separate little bag and all you'll have to do once you receive the dongle for the first time is literally clip one in as I've just shown you, put the housing together, tighten up the four screws and then away you go. It'll be ready to use. So yeah, this is very, very helpful because when I supply PolarVault modifications to clients, I don't include any batteries. And that's simply for the reason that it helps a lot in terms of customs. The last thing that I want is after a client has spent a lot of money with me having a souped up camera, is their camera to end up getting returned in post and wasting a whole bunch of time. So not only does this lithium ion solution mean that this uh, dongle is a lot more repairable because eventually a battery will lose charge. It also means potentially provided that you carry a screwdriver with you, you could replace a battery in the field if you were carrying spares. Um, but it means that these are now easier to ship because I can supply them without the batteries. Now, what, I hear you ask, do you do if you are one of the early adopters of the SX70R original dongle? Well, I've got a few solutions for you. First of all, if and when it comes time for your battery to be losing charge and uh, no longer doing what it's supposed to, I'm happy to fix it for you and upgrade it purely for the cost of parts. Because as well as having that new battery holder design, the original dongles are now upgradable. And here's what I'm talking about. Here is one of the earlier revisions. And basically all you have to do is desolder the original battery, solder in a single AAA holder, get a hold of the slightly thicker new housing. So the actual front housing on the dongle did have to become a little bit thicker to accommodate the extra thickness of the battery. But basically with a new front housing and a new battery holder, in the future, your old original classic dongle can be upgraded and modernized to user replaceable batteries. So there you have it. Practicing what I preach. And maybe I should, uh, maybe I should rephrase Gandhi and uh, say that my, um, my scope is more encouraging people to be the change that I wanna see in the world. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's really all I wanted to mention. Just a quick little video that the SX70R dongle will be being produced in the future with user replaceable batteries. Thanks to yours truly. A little bit of encouragement to young men from the Instant Camera Guy, a bit of back and forth, a bit of design revision, and now we have a vastly better product. Now, in terms of selling these, I currently have a few limited stock. I mean, you could technically call these prototypes, although as far as I'm concerned, they're pretty much finished products and ready for prime time. I am going to try and stock as many of these as possible. I typically find it's about 50-50 at the moment in terms of me doing SX70R conversions as to whether or not people even want the dongle in the first place. Um, they are definitely handy to have. Um, one advantage that they have over the app is that they pair automatically, for example. So uh, I think this is, the uh, this is the dongle that is paired to this camera at the moment. And it basically means since, it's or, since it already knows the camera, you could be in a crowded environment with a lot of competing Bluetooth signals and it'll be able to pair straight away. Whereas with the phone app, if you're say out in you know, New York in Times Square and everyone else has a Bluetooth device enabled, it's gonna take quite a long time to scan through the entire crowd and find the camera. So that is one advantage to having the dongle. Um, but honestly, I find that most clients of mine that get the SX70R upgrade are doing so purely because they want a brand new automatic PCB and they don't there you go just showing you the uh, remote trigger mode um, they don't necessarily want any of the bells and whistles they're just happy to have brand new brains and anything else is a bonus um, but yes I will plan on stocking a few more of these now um, I expect that this first bunch will sell out quickly um, but yeah if you want your camera upgraded and you'd like one of the new dongles, uh, simply just let me know. Um, but yeah, that means that if you have an SX70R camera that you've had upgraded with my PolarVault battery conversion, everything now takes the same type of battery. 
um, which I, I think is really, really cool. It means you only need to carry stock of one, you could carry several spares, and you'll basically never be out of the loop. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I am going to go now and uh, finish refurbishing my workshop and fixing a whole bunch of client repairs. Just a reminder that at least at the time of this video for the next month or two, so throughout September and October, I am renovating my house and my new workshop space. So I will be very, very busy. I need the money, so please note that yes, I will be working on and repairing cameras at this time, I just might take a little bit longer than usual. But trust me, I need every cent that I can get at the moment. It is within my best interest to finish your camera. It is being done, but if you don't hear from me for a few days, that is why. On that note, if you would like to make a donation to the cause, links are down below to my coffee account uh, where you can donate towards the, towards the workshop um, throughout the month of September and October uh, and probably ongoing for the time being. Uh, I will be writing the name of every single person that donates on my workshop walls until one of the walls is full. So if you wanna get in as a, uh, a founder of sorts, and have your name on the Instant Camera Guy workshop wall, then please feel free to leave a donation. Um, the cost of building materials at the moment is very expensive here in Australia because of the housing crisis. So uh, yeah, seriously, every dollar helps. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day and uh, yeah, like, subscribe, all that other junk, and I'll see you next time.